When you dedicate your life to preserving wildlife, this is what success looks like. The desert bighorn sheep has just been downlisted from endangered to threatened in the state of New Mexico. It's why I became a wildlife biologist, so it's actually really exciting. Now it's time to get an accurate count of how many bighorns survived and how many were born this year. The numbers are still good. It means we had some pretty good survival from last year. Um, we have a lot of lambs on the ground, which is great. We don't have very many yearlings from last year, but we already knew there was a pretty high mortality. Um, right because some lions got in the pen. So it's pretty much what we expected, and I think the survey went really well. 13, 14, 15, 16. Here comes a lead you coming out. This is unforgiving land, dry, craggy, perfect for desert bighorn sheep. Not so perfect for the biologists, students, game wardens, and volunteers who came to count sheep on this historic desert bighorn sheep census. It's been held for the last 13 years here at the Red Rock Wildlife Area Captive Breeding Facility. It's a really rough hike, especially the first one. The Ash Canyon is extremely steep, and people are walking across the slope. Um, some of the routes are harder than others, especially the ones where there's a lot of cliffs, and people have to try and either hike up and around them and come back down or go under them or pick their way through them. The term captive breeding facility is a bit misleading. The so-called sheep pens cover a lot of nasty terrain, which must be covered inch by inch by these walkers in order to get a proper count. The sheep are quick. We actually watched a, 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 a ewe with her little lamb behind her running across the slope and they vaulted over this chasm and this little teeny lamb just vaulted over behind her. However, it's critical to get an accurate census because some of these bighorns will be relocated to other areas in New Mexico as the repopulation effort continues. So you've got to know how many you've got before you decide how many to trap and move. We'd like to leave a minimum of 20 ewes and yearling females to continue propagating the herd. So we need to know how many sheep are here to know if we'll have enough to transplant this year if we need to wait another year. Getting a bird's eye view of the rare and elusive bighorns is the reward. The first desert bighorn I saw was about um, a foot and a half tall and it was running down the ridge in front of us and uh, it was this year's lamb. And then we got up onto the ridge and saw a group of 15 come down and then another group of six or seven that ran down the ridge right in front of us. You know what's almost as rare as the bighorn? getting a volunteer to return for next year's census. We don't see too many faces a second time. Six or seven hours of uh, pretty serious walking and uh, particularly in this big canyon behind us, a really steep canyon. And the uh, luck of the draw, you might get a route that resembles rock climbing, but uh, um, I, think, I don't think anybody got hurt today and uh, we're always glad for that, although it's uh, a bit risky in some of those locations that Bighorn sheep seem to get around really easily and uh, two-legged mammals have a little more trouble. The ram with its huge curved horns is glorified throughout history and biblical times. In the 90s, the desert bighorn sheep were about to become history, teetering on the brink of extinction, with as few as a couple of hundred remaining in New Mexico in the 1990s. You know, when I started working here, we had less than 170 sheep in the wild, and um, the reality was that I didn't think we could recover them if we continued along the same lines that we were doing. We were doing transplants out of Red Rock, but they were not successful. The sheep were dying. And, um, you know, there's a, a lot of years the biologists were encouraging um, doing mountain lion control because we knew that's what was killing them. And, you know, politically, there was a lot of resistance to that. But just prop that floodgate open and crawl underneath. 10 -4. And don't make sure it closes so the lions don't get in. A huge number of desert bighorn sheep were being killed off. Somewhere in the neighborhood of 85% of radio collar desert bighorns outside the Red Rock facility were eaten by mountain lions. Finally, after a long battle, a cougar removal program started in 2001. Now it's Steve Harville's job to hunt out the predators and protect the flock here in Red Rock. There's been about 30 lions taken here, six or seven inside, I think. He also keeps a close eye on the sheep, making sure they aren't sick or hungry or without water, and it's paid off. It looks like we're going to have a pretty good lamb crop. Cougar Control's impact on the desert bighorns population was immediate and dramatic. And the program's just been amazingly successful. You know, we don't take a lot of lions. We take a limited number of lions, and they're already a hunted species. Um, it's well within the population parameters of the number of lions we can take and still, you know, maintain healthy populations of lions in the state. 
Um, and the result is that we now have you know, over 450 uh, sheep in the state. So successful that the State Game Commission took the extraordinary step of downlisting the desert bighorn, with nearly 500 wild sheep in New Mexico, counting the lambs born this year. But Eric Rominger won't rest until the desert bighorns become game animals once again. The short-term goal is to get over 500. We'd like to have desert sheep back in all the historical ranges, which would allow us to have substantially more than a thousand sheep eventually in New Mexico.